Greetings, nerds. This is Dina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's I'm doing good. Great. No, we're making our way through July. Yeah, yeah, we're making our way through July. I have to say, I'm I'm enjoy I'm eating well this July with <laughs> like everybody as far as our shows with like House of the Dragon and the boys. I saw where like this week's episode of House of the Dragon. It's like 8.1 million people watched it and counting. It's like their best like 24 hours period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you also watched Beverly Hills Cops, Axel F. Yeah. It's a yeah, ridiculously long title. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were trying to distance themselves from Beverly Hills Cop 3. Because <laughs> that one is definitely the weakest movie in, in the franchise for sure. But yeah, I did watch Axel. I'll just, I'll just say Axel F. And because uh, everybody who's a fan of that franchise will know who I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, it dropped on Netflix over the 4th of July weekend. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of the the first two. And anytime they're on, you know, I'm just like, just, just stop, set aside time. I'm going to watch it. And I have to say that the new one, XLF, was a great blend of, and you've probably heard people talking about it, great blend of, like, nostalgia done well you know because many times with these when you're rehashing old franchises like this and, and bringing in new things you know it can easily become uh, it could be a hit or it could be a, a, a colossal miss and this to me was like a hit but you know from the moment this movie starts it had the classic glenn fry heat is on as he's driving down the streets of detroit and and then of course we have a lot of the characters back from the original film in 84. And of course, you know, it, it follows the standard Beverly Hills Cop tropes and story structure and everything. But I mean, Eddie was just like, he, he you tell he's very comfortable with this character and, and he knows how to play it. And the cool thing about it too is they didn't hide from the fact of that you know, it's now 40 years since the the original film and 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 they you know and you know a lot of times like for example when i was like watching indiana jones you know that was trying to like recapture lightning in a bottle with that old franchise and it just didn't work here you know they embrace eddie you know the fact that he you know, he is older and and they make the jokes work appropriately whenever uh, when when Axel does his usual like things, but as far as you know, being street smart cop, and they really they really lean into that um, and, and and make it work for the story. So when things do happen, it's like okay, it feels organic to the story. It's just not like we're just trying to to uh, you know manufacture something here. So really, really, if you're if you're a fan of Beverly Hills Cop, I will cannot recommend it enough. You'll 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 definitely enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely one I'll, I'll definitely be checking out again. I definitely uh, recaptured lightning in a bottle, as I, as I think I tweeted out uh, Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Netflix, Netflix. Uh, the other thing that we both watched was uh, the trailer for Gladiator um, 2, <laughs> not to be confused with 1, the, the 2001 classic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that movie. Love I that love movie. that movie too. Watch yeah. this trailer. Um, this trailer did nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing for me. First Not even all, Denzel. <laughs> no, no. Actually, Denzel was part of the problem because I'm just like, dude, why? Why are you here? <laughs> what, are, <laughs> what? What are you? Why did how? A how did they bring you into this? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, D, why are you here? <laughs> like, I was very confused. I mean, it, it was a good trailer from the sense that I still don't really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I did recognize one face in the crowd. And I'm like, I know you from the original. What you doing? And yep. I'm like, I still don't, I don't know much. And, and that's, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the trailer did nothing for me, but at the same time, I don't need it to do anything for me because 
I'm going to see Fan and Will's reaction when they go see it in theaters and then tell me if I should and then probably not and watch it when it comes out on streaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I, I think for me it was um, I enjoyed Denzel and, and, and but he, it, I felt like it was like for me it was like it, it took me out of it whenever he was right? going to, yeah, I think right. that's the th- yeah. I mean, the smile. I mean, he's he's electrifying and everything about it. Everything about it. it's not him personally. It's just him doing Denzel things took me out of the trailer a bit uh, when it's supposed to be a period piece. And it's not because he's black either. I mean, I mean, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I want to be very clear. I'm African American myself, so I want to be very clear. It wasn't that being an anachronism as far as you know having him there uh it was just really just you know, yeah it was just more those signature million watt smile that he gives uh but i did i will say whenever uh, paul mescal's character was like uh one of the roman army or whatever he and when he said too much i did like that line i, I will say that <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I see. Like, I don't even remember that line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that line. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, we we will we will see. I mean, this this movie I feel like has been in the makes for at least a decade plus. Yeah. plus for, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. even longer than Black Adam. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so so we'll we'll see if it does at least better in the box office and with critics when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I know really Scott, I know he had a, kinda had a miss with Napoleon, so he, he definitely needs to uh get a win yeah. here with the... Ridley Scott just always is hit or miss. Yeah. Like he he's one of those directors where Everyone is a big fan when he delivers a hit, but you forget. You're like, go go check out his IMDb. <laughs> the man <Yeah. laughs> does not have the best average. <laughs> Let's just yeah. say that. So he's not a, in my opinion, he's not he's not like Nolan, where right. even some of Nolan's like least favorable movies people still respect like they they, they're not complete disasters or it's like oh but the cinematography and all this other stuff and it's just that he like he got in like there no one has a better average than ridley scott so it's um yeah and and i don't i don't know to me especially if like ridley's coming off of a of a bad swing to come out with a sequel to a movie decades old (laughs) You're yeah. like, hmm. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> <Yeah>. I don't know. <laughs> but but then again, the actors who are partaking in this makes makes the um viewer interested of being oh, yeah. like, uh, oh, well how how did you get them besides money? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody one of the things like Pedro, you know, of course there's the thing Pedro Pascal's and everything these days, but I mean Connie Nils is also back from I guess from the original one and um yeah so we'll yeah. See, you know, it comes out november 22nd and we'll, you know i'll probably go check it out and it's one of the few films that, this, that from this year that I actually do where i do want to go check it out in the theater so yeah um the other thing that we both watched over the long holiday weekend is the bear season three i don't want to get too in depth into it i still I've not had enough time with the season mm. at all. I, I have rewatched three episodes okay. yesterday. Um, I, I'm still, but my, I nothing is changing my original sentiment to you where now it did not hit me nearly as hard as season two. Mm. And I kind of anticipated that going into it. I don't have a favorite episode. And I think overall this season just arguably it didn't go anywhere mm. it, it 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 stayed very consistent mm-hmm. almost to the point of annoyance <laughs> you're like <laughs> are what are we doing here <laughs> where yeah. are we going like really and um then it just gets annoying because it's um because of how they end it so to speak so um yeah. but but you you had some arguably different thoughts yeah yeah i mean I, I, we had 
we were annoyed about certain things. Uh, we differed on what annoyed us. I know for me, I think it was the facts and their little and their little bit. I felt went way too long <laughs> throughout the season. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, I'm like you though, where I still, I still have to. I gotta watch it, watch it again to really like solidify my feeling about this season. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I did share with you that I, I thought the episode with Tina was one that that stood out for me. Yeah. If I, you know, if I had one that um, did like as far as on a positive res- respect, uh, I felt like Doors. I think I also shared with you. I felt Doors left me feeling like how I did with Fishes, where I needed to like <laughs> I needed to like watch it in like uh, segments because it was just so like so so much and I guess the intensity of it. Um, and then I think the, the episode where sugar finally does have her baby, I, that one did that. That's probably my least favorite one of the season. Oh, I, I see. It's so interesting because that, that one took me by surprise and I was, mm-hmm. I was, I was more captivated than I thought I would have been in that whole episode. Um, and, and yeah, Tina stands out, but it's also, like, and I, I, I started rewatching Doors last night. I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have yet to be like, see, I get it from the sense that fishes, the intensity, the play, like it was, they took the intensity of the kitchen, but mm-hmm. made it in a family uh, Christmas dinner. Which, which like has its own drama, and they they blended that so beautifully. But with doors, you just get the intensity of the kitchen. Yeah. Um. And so and so to me, I was just like, wait, wait, are we going back to season one? <laughs> like, <laughs> like this. I I don't know why. And and arguably, I watched an interview with the actor who plays the uncle. Um, okay. I forget his name and I, uh, I it, it was actually just like a 10 minute clip of it and he was talking about fishes uh-huh. and he said that that wasn't his favorite episode he agreed with us uh, four okay. is his favorite episode of the se- of okay. season two okay. and yeah. he said he explained why and I could I was like thank you that is articulates everything I feel feel about Forks and why it's such an exceptional episode of television. It's Mm -hmm. because within that span of 40 minutes, you actually see a character change. And then and then change significantly enough that you spot the differences within the next few episodes. Mm -hmm. Like there Mm -hmm. there there was an actual arc and development and my problem with season three of the bear is arguably none of the characters actually change from where they where they start at the beginning of the season to where they end Mm -hmm. and and it just and it feels like they just put us in that kitchen and turned on the heat but nobody escaped (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> nobody <laughs> turned it down like it was just same and i'm like okay i yeah. don't know but uh, that being said i think artistically they made some a lot of really interesting choices i yeah. mean arguably the first episode is just montage yeah the, there's maybe five or i don't know 10 lines in that entire thing and y- you see different points of life and everything. Um, And, and the writing, I'm glad I binged it because I could catch a lot of the connections with the dialogues and references, um, which I always enjoy, but I also, it's just, and I knew, I knew it would never beat season two for me. (laughs) (laughs) Season two. Yeah. Season two is, is truly one of those like, top to top to bottom master class in television uh for sure so it so yeah it's it's watching a, a, another season so so close to it and right. yeah uh, you know maybe it's recency bias but at the same time i agree with you with, with the fact that 
there 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 was some treading water with many of the characters this third season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And um, but they're they're shooting season four and we're gonna watch season four and see what happens. And and I will say this, like I'm not gonna this is a major spoiler, but shout out to the casting people and shout out to making sure that guest stars don't get revealed. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> sure. I thought season two had them, and then next thing you know, season three happens, and I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Josh what, is what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, screw Ridley Scott. People just want to be on the bear. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man people want to be on the bear and people definitely want to be a part of game of thrones and specifically house of dragon as we head into season two episode four the red dragon and the gold i am db <laughs> i am i am so pissed off because like you told me last week, I saw it on IMDb. Episode four was called The Dance of the Dragons. And yeah. unfortunately, I knew what that meant. So, so, and then to my surprise, the other night when I put on the episode, I'm like, what is this title? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, arguably it's a tomato, tomato. <laughs> but I'm <Yeah>. like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> So just screw you, IMDb. <laughs> screw you. <laughs> well, uh, everybody was like putting it out there, Dance of the Dragons, you know. So I think it just became like the unofficial title. But <laughs> so HBO was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna put the official title on here, the Red Dragon and Gold. <laughs> but isn't that actually like what the event is called in the books, or what the book itself like? I feel as though there is a book reference there. Um, yeah, uh, and if people yeah. have, let us know. Yeah, yeah, let us know if you read the book. I because I I've always the references to the book was always Dance of the Dragon, but mm -hmm. right, yeah. right, or Dance of a Dragon, or you know, or some variation of that. Well, this um, start off tonight by talking about Damon um, because during this dance he seems to be um, off in his own dreamlike. Um, world where we we again see young Renera mm -hmm. um, speaking all high val high Valerian, and um, she gets her head cut off. <laughs> she gets her head cut off, um, <laughs> and and it's just I I did watch the behind the scenes making of this episode, and they did point out how the scene this sequence itself where she's um, sitting on the throne at Dragonstone is supposed to parallel a scene in season one where he's on the throne and she's coming to meet him, um, which was, which was cool. Now, did I remember that? No. <laughs> no. I remember that scene. I, I do remember that scene. Yeah. I don't. I, for some reason I didn't, I don't, there are other Damon and uh, Renera scenes that I remember from season one. For some reason that did not stick out, but I did, I did find it very interesting that um, we got so much of these Targaryens speak in Val high Valerian. Yeah. And um, I found that to be very interesting um, because we get it in this and then we get it over on uh, Teen Green in a later scene. Yeah. Um, shout out to the editors because I love the transition between the dream and when Damon's in the waking world because, like, there's been a dragon and then snap. Like, it was just so well edited every mm -hmm. time they did one of those transitions. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I know. You know, getting just quickly back to Damon, and whenever he had the vision of young Renera, but of course she's still, but she's also in the um, you know old Renera's clothing, if I recall. And uh, in, in, in the High Valerian, if you go to Westerosi's, there's actually a whole translation of, as far as what uh, what she says to him. I'll just read a little bit of it. Uh, it's been said that Tar the Tar Targaryens are closer to gods than to men. In my eyes, you were a god, Damon Targaryen, the prince of the city, the lord of Flea Bottom. I was innocent. You exploited me and abandoned me. You sold my name to court. You empowered my rivals. You tried to make my ruin. 
and and you know it continues to go on but it really when you read read the translation of what she was saying to him it does when i when i think of damon at heron hall i, I was thinking of constant haunting mm-hmm. and you know from the visions that he has at night of course he's not sleeping well all the things um that that, that are going on there to stir the pot <laughs> yep <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah I, I, you know th- those I, I liked the thing I, what i liked so much about this episode is of course we were all ex- anticipating a big showdown and what, what we did get at the end but i just really liked the way they just sort of set the tension i mean they were just building on the, the prior episodes and then really re- slowly building up the tension as the episode progressed and really focusing on different you know, different segments of team green team black damon and how uh, how all of that just sort of came to a head obviously at the end right right and i just want to make one point about alice um is that she is a bastard and i i always find I always raise an eyebrow when anyone in Game of Thrones says they're a bastard because those characters are often significant and yeah. of purpose. And so it's and and have their own stories. So we'll yeah. see if we we explore more of Alice moving forward, um, yeah. especially as she seems to be the main contributor to Damon's haunting, as you put it. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, whenever she was like, you know, with, with like the, you know, pick, man picking up on the, the the fact that they were quarreling, um, you know, and of course giving you know Damon the the uh, potion there to help him help him quote unquote sleep, but then like you said with the transitions, and you know he's like literally like wake, you know he's he's that that edit was awesome because he like cuts to like sleep and then he's like in the in the chamber you know council room there with uh you know with the blackwood and and and, and you know also talking with you know, earlier in episode with tully but really with, with with blackwood and like um it just really just just really set that scene very very well and then of course you know later whenever he's like you know has a has the vision at night and and sees a person walking and and um you know he starts to follow it and it looks like you know like it's supposed to be amen but then whenever the the person turns around it, you know it's in, in fact damon and goes to your point about alice rivers and uh you know whenever she says you're gonna die here and uh so a little bit of foreshadowing there yeah yeah she yeah. said that in the last week's episode right yeah yeah but yeah there's a lot of small councils in this episode because we see mm-hmm. damon's attempt at a small council and he ends <laughs> up with just a small ally <laughs> Who doesn't even understand what's going on in a, in a castle that is just nothing. But it's the prize possession. So they, the writers did a nice job of really making it clear how everyone's circling Heron Hall as if it's this crown jewel, mm-hmm. which it mm-hmm. is to an extent. But, like, Damon is there, and he doesn't really have an army. He doesn't really have... Like there's hardly anyone in this in this castle, and it's basically in ruins. So yeah. it, it's it's very uh, the irony is not lost on me. Um, no, no. While he has that small council meeting, we also see Team Black's council meeting with Renera, who's apparently it takes her longer to get back from King's Landing <laughs> than to. Yeah. King's Landing. <laughs> she was gone for a good portion of this episode. No yeah. one knew where she went. Renaris knew where she, Renice ne- knew where she went. Um, and and the one thing I want to say about the Renaris Small Council is it's it's all men, arguably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, it, like the moment when they're all arguing. And then Renice is just standing there and tries to give reason. And then she gets, quote unquote, shut down, basically, only for Coralis to come in and put the members in their place. And then Renice can speak like I found that to be a very smart move to just point out that she's the queen that never was. Mm-hmm. And. And yes, she's a Targaryen. She has a dragon. She's she. They call her princess. But at the end of the day, she's not Rhaenyra. 
Right. And therefore, they can dismiss her so easily. And yet it takes her husband, the sea master, to come in to actually say, no, you will listen to my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will. <laughs> um, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, there are, they, like, in a, in a weird way, nobody's wrong. Because they, are they wrong for saying we actually have to, like, take action here? Not, no, because right. Team Green, uh, they are taking action. Like it or not, they are yeah. actually progressing. You have to figure out a way how to stop that. You can't just go off to King's Landing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't get off to King's Landing. You know, they're building, you know, and, and, and you know, again, I, I, the actions that Damon took, you know, are coming to pass because Renera was like, "Look, you know, you by you killing Jaharis, you're going to turn these houses against me." And you know, and then when we're in these in these chamber discussions, you know, they talk about how quickly some of the the, the other bannermen's flags turned because right. of his actions. So yeah, so you're right, and 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 so they are just sort of sitting sitting there and. And it, and and it does again point out the sexism in this in in this world of Westeros when, like you said, Corlys comes in and and you know basically like you know listen to listen to the de facto hand here <laughs> of, right. of Renice and and all, but um, yeah, I, I thought that was and even you know and it, I guess and then you know, there's Jace and, and Bela, but they're both young, so they're not going to listen to them either. So it was. It was all these guys providing good counsel, but but doing so in a mansplainy, um, condescending kind of way, which you know, which you know, which undercuts the the overall effort uh, as, as you know, Sir Christian and the the Greens, you know, say what you will about Cole. I mean, he 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 has he shows himself this episode to be actually a pretty decent tactician. Right. Right. Yeah. I I. I'm curious to know how the council or black council feels about Jace because he technically is a bastard. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> they call him <laughs> prince, but they also call Renice princess. So mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. It, like you can have a title all you want, but if you have no power, it means nothing. Exactly. Granted he has a dragon. So yeah. Yeah. Th there, there is that. Um, and they do have dragons, and unfortunately, they have the smaller dragons. And um, Renice is the one who, when Renera finally shows up and gets filled in on what's happening, it's pretty much no. We we have to send in dragon stone and or bricks end, and that is when Jace wants to go. She get he gets shot done. Down, Renera wants to go. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it's just Renice, and and she 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 kind of has made peace with that decision, and and doesn't even wait to hear, yeah, go. She just says, no, I'm going. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> I'm going. yep. I'm probably gonna die, but I'm going. Yep, yep. <laughs> and and so that's really what's going on with Team Black. It's just. And we're going to get into the big event, but it's just this episode was hard for me because I knew what was going to happen. But it also I'm finding to be kind of disheartened this season where I'm just like, I'm on Team Black. I'm on Team Black. I'm pretty sure Team Black is losing. <laughs> like, like, we're just not. I mean, we don't have Vagar. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. have Vagar. And the the people were on our side. The people are not on our side. The people are mixed. Like, yeah. it's just nothing. It feels just sad to go into these fights because you want to see a fight. But then you're just like, but they got Vagar. <laughs> yeah. They've, they've like, got, they have her. Yeah. They have they have they have mean granny and <laughs> we don't. But yeah, but you know, I think as I was saying earlier, I think that to me that was you're right. I I was feeling that way too. In that, um, and, and but 
with disheartened with with the way the war effort w- was going towards Team Black and 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 to Al- and to R- Renera's you know decision that she's like okay she tr- she legitimately tried every single course to keep it from going to to having to use the dragons because I mean she knows the destructive power of of the dragons and mm-hmm. and and and, and, I, and I think you know she still. You know, it really gets into like the motivations between the two sides because you know at the end of it, Renera really wants to preserve the, her father's legacy. I mean, that was the big thing that Viserys, you know, he presided over peace. He did, you know, and and if we use unleash these dragons, and because we've you know we've seen evidence prior to the the events of of this episode, the destructive power of them. So she's, you know, they're, the Targaryens are fully aware. So she doesn't, you know, she, yeah, so I may win the battle, but then I'll, I'll be ruined. I'll be presiding over a ruined land because we dropped the bomb. And right. so, yeah, so she she really was trying her best not to go that route. But but as her counsel noted, and after, you know, and she notes as well. And then, of course, you know, she does tell Jace about the Song of Ice and Fire. I mean, it's for her, it's all, you know, it, it really is all about preserving Westeros, preserving the land, preser- and also just preserving the Targaryen legacy of peace that has that has been in place for, for many years versus Team Green, which is all about, it's all about power. They can give shit about legacy and Viserys and everything else. Well, I don't know if I 100% agree with that. I mean, Alistair. Oh. It had, was like searching for the books. She knows she fucked up. She she cares about Viserys, like she told Aegon. Like you're you're not half of the ruler your father was, and and she's regretting her, her, that decision. I mean, this whole episode with Allison was just about her own trying to reconcile the fact. Arguably, this whole season. With, like, choices she's made from having sex with Christian Cole, which technically did help lead to her grand, her, her <laughs> grandson's death, to, to the fact that she, arguably, a decision Allison made is, is the one, like, what knocked over the first domino. Yep. To allow her son to usurp and not even allow, push him into that. Because I remember season one, Aegon wasn't like dying to rule or anything. No, they had, did they have to like send out a search party to find him? Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. was resigned for Renera to rule. But it was yeah. a decision Alison and Otto made that put Aegon on that throne and started this war. Yeah. So the the power... I agree that like Otto mainly was very power ha- hungry. And that's probably why we have because Otto, because Aegon and Aemon are both half high tower and half Targaryen. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> they do have that side of themselves. But also Aegon, he has the power. He doesn't know how to use it. Right. He doesn't know anything about ruling. And he also lost his son. He he's feeling as though no one listens to him, and he has to show so so his like like what I'm getting at is I don't quite agree that Team Green only cares about power. I think they have. I think the writers have done a good job about providing different motivationals motivations for for those characters to do what they do. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I mean, I, I do. I mean, I, I, you know, Aegon to me is just a figurehead. Right. Right. And, and, and so as you noted, you know, Allison and in particular Otto, they are, you know, basically, you know, she, they, they, you know, and she even calls him out on it in this episode when he was like, you know, all petulantly like, y'all listen to me and that kind of stuff. Nobody listens to me and that kind of thing. And she's like, look, I mean, you know, we ran while your dad was like ill. We ran this place. We know what we we know this joint. So, um, so I think it. You know, so I I, I do still think but she that she doesn't run it anymore. Well, like, well yeah, brought that up too about how yeah. like he kicked Otto to the curb, 
Yeah. And she has no voice practically. She's just the mother of the king. Mm-hmm. And so all of her power has been thrown out the window. Yeah. 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 So I just yeah. survival mode. Killing yeah, babies. It, <laughs> yeah. It is survival mode for sure. I mean, that's what I mean. I, I think part of the. I mean, uh, uh, so, I mean, as far as the motivations for her trying to find the books, I mean, I don't know if she was. Is, was it she was just trying to confirm what Brunero told her or is she just trying to like read it for herself and try to figure out how she can like salvage whatever control that they that that she can that she can have over over the situation right a little of both like all of it yeah. i mean yeah. she 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 has lived in that castle for so long. She was raised by Otto. She got married at a very young age to Viserys. She has seen men rule and make decision and rely on the histories to do so. So I think that's, that is why we saw that, that scene in her trying to find them. Um, but and and she and I see my interpretation of the line wasn't necessarily that he's a figurehead, but just that when you're in that position, you're not a soldier, mm-hmm. you're not a warrior, you send the warriors off to battle. Yeah. And so Eamon can go because he's second in line. <laughs> like, yeah. You can't go because you're actually here. Like ruling isn't about fighting. It's actually about governing and it's political. And that's mm-hmm. what Aegon doesn't seem to understand. Yeah. Um, and and we'll we'll see if he yeah. ever figures it out or if he has a chance. Um, well, if he, yeah, <laughs> he may, yeah. well, he may not now, but or or yeah, I guess uh, there's a va- there 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 may be a vacuum there at the top. <laughs> We'll yeah, that. like yeah. like I couldn't I couldn't figure out from the ending scene if he's alive or not. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I have a feeling he is, but barely. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah he's 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 going he's 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 going to be like his father's son there, <laughs> as far as just kind that's of being exactly a... what I thought. I'm like, man, they're just going all in on what <laughs> I've been calling since episode one, the Sarah's <laughs> little brother. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, but you know, think of you know, as you're talking about the books and and and, and Aegon. I just happened to think, you know, also just thinking about the two, you know, the two rulers because, you know, that's the other thing too. I think Renera does listen to her counsel, even though she wanted to fight. Whenever they're like, "Look, no, 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 you're the ruler," she and she gets it because you know she was trained from a young age when Viserys decided to name her as his heir. You know, so she was, so she was sitting at the council. She was doing the things that basically, like as you were saying, Allison did. That if they had any inkling that Aegon, well, would, would was going to be eventual king, you know, king, they they well, they may he may well, given his temperament, he may even if he sat there, I don't know if he would have would have gotten it, gotten it, especially you know with the way Aemon like called him out on the High Valerian. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> You know, because he just doesn't have that intellectual curiosity or temperament that, you know, to learn these kind of things. So, you know, even even if the situation had broken a different way, I think even Aegon would still be, um, you know, feckless king. Just yeah. because of his temperament. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We'll never know. Yeah. Um. So, so the Dance of Dragons. Saw yeah. Rock's Rest. You got Sir Christian coming in. And then Renice shows up. And and also Aegon shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Cole was like, oh fuck. Uh, what, All right, let's let's, let's use this as a rallying call. <laughs> what what were your thoughts about when um Aemon um blasted his little bro out of the sky? My when I far I mean, I'm, I will give my real time reaction when I watched it, not not after not after listening to other people talk about it but sunday night when i was watching it i was like he sees the moment there to like uh, to take his brother out that was my thought yeah 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 that was my real-time feeling he was like all the teasing all the everything from you know it was just like i 
know how to use this drag. I know how to use this dragon, and I'm going to take him out. Yeah, I mean, he's a uh, he. Aegon is not necessarily someone you want on your team. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make a decision like this. Yeah. So so that happens and um and then you, you think Renice is going away, she comes back and and she Renice, Maris and uh Vagar get into her quarrel and and Renice actually like does pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then they try to do this didn't work at all for me. I know for some people it did, but it didn't. The whole fake out where, oh, you think Vagar is down. Nope, comes back and um, basically rips off the head of Marie, Maris. And and Renee falls to her death. And yeah. it, it, she falls right into the castle at Rock's mm-hmm. Rest, if I'm not mistaken. And she did, it, yeah. just, it is a lot. I will say, all of this dragon fighting... I've watched season one of Game of Thrones, and yes, we did not get dragons for a very long time. And when we did, we only got a few, and they were all on the same team. This is some of the best, like, graphics for dragon dragons fighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. the moments when they are just swirling in the air, tangled and together, and it, it, it really is like a dance. And it yeah. so they executed that very well. I love, I felt like there was no score used. Mm-hmm. You're right. And, and, and I, I love that. It reminded me of some of the infamous Game of Thrones episodes with battles and, and how I feel as though the writers and producers do this in Game of Thrones world to underscore the, just the travesty of war. Mm-hmm. And and especially when dragons are involved, especially when dragons are involved, because it's it's like yeah, victory, but like is it a victory? Because both sides have lost significant amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and it's just, and it's it's not. There is no glory. Like mm-hmm. that's another thing. I mean. Kristen, who's been leading this whole thing, and you've seen him in a few instances take be able to take over people's castles, and you it does feel victorious, it does feel glory. But on this battlefield, he gets knocked out and then wakes up, and it's the the fight is over, yeah. and it's like, what happened? And this my men are burnt to a crisp. And where's the king? And it's just, it's it doesn't feel victorious. Um, no. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it goes back to like I think it was Renice who even noted how like these these people, these men, uh, have only played played battle, you know, and you know, in their little tournaments and stuff. They've never had real combat because again, the, the you know Westeros has been at peace for all these years, and so. Yeah. Yeah, so when you see the when you see the 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 ferociousness of of the of the battle, you know, I've made, put in my notes that you know, mad mutually assured destruction. I mean, that's that's what basically what you have here when you have the when you have these two dragons like fighting, and like when you see Aegon, uh, whatever Sky fought, uh, Sunfire and uh, Melise fight, uh, and you know, in the wound, you know, the dragon dragon's blood is like you know flammable. <laughs> I mean, you know, we see like the devastation. Just from the dragons getting wounded on on the battlefield, not even a, doing a direct assault on the, on the on the ground troops. So yeah, it's just it's just, it's, yeah, you're right. With not having a score, just really, I I didn't notice that until you brought it up. But now that, that you know, but I do do remember that now that it was just the sounds of battle, and and I think that does heighten the 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 the, the, the drama and the uh, ferociousness of the of the assault right and it's not even a battle necessarily because yeah. it's just a fight between two dragons because yeah. in that instance the people on the ground it's like 
we're right underneath them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do we do? <laughs> it's like Sir X is the first season whenever Damon like steps on the guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like it's like the, their fight wasn't allowed to actually actually Cole's men didn't seize the castle and run forward yeah. until the dragons were gone. Like everyone was just watching them. Yeah. Um and and then at the end um Kristen wakes up and he goes and to fight into the woods to find Aegon. And he finds Aegon, but first he encounters Aemon, who found Aegon first. And mm-hmm. you see, I feel like he put the sword back in. So I agree. Like a part of me is like, okay, I, I like the uncertainty here right now. I, I know some people know what ends up happening, some people don't, but I can appreciate how the ambiguity right now with with yeah. Aegon and Aegon and Aemon because it's like he did fall to his death. <laughs> he like <laughs> fell from the sky just like Renice. There was fire and there's a dragon. So mm-hmm. so he he shouldn't be in perfect condition. No. Um so arguably Aegon, like you said, sees the opportunity in the sky. Well, then he's got to go down and make sure the job is done. Or on the, another part of him is like, oh, you that you continuing to live would be actually in pain. Yeah. <laughs> so put you out of your misery. <laughs> um, so so they're like, like I I, I liked it. Um, yeah. Um, I I can appreciate that. I'm I'm. I'm curious to to know about what happens um, at that point, but I'm also just we're halfway through the season, yeah, halfway yeah. through the season, and there is a season three, right? Yeah. Yep, it has our it was confirmed right when this uh, the season started. Yeah. Okay, I need them to bring back Viserys. I'm missing him so freaking much. <laughs> <laughs> the shadow of Viserys, like even though he's not physically there. Uh, his shadow is 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 cast wide over this show, but even but even even Matt Smith jokes about how uh, they miss Patty, uh, take uh, taking it out of universe. Uh, you know they do miss Patty and, and Viserys the character because it, it, he really did bring such an element to the show. Well, it's just that we were able to have so many interactions with these characters, and now we're on teams and. And and like I was saying before, I'm so disheartened right now. Yeah. I feel like the odds are not in our girl's favor. And it's, I'm just like, we're really going to go on with this for another, like, what, 10 episodes? Maybe more? <laughs> like, yeah, how, yeah. how long can we go here? So yeah. I'm really hoping that some of the other seeds that have been planted in this these first four episodes start to sprout a bit more. Um because because uh i don't know I think, it's just uh, yeah yeah i think they will i mean you know even even in this episode as i noted earlier they they, they really do to me do a great job of building things up because the, some of those earlier seeds like for example the the livestock and the coin not you know the provisions for team green are, are running very very low because of the blockade that they that uh, team black has on on King's Landing. So, you know, those kind of things resurface themselves. Of course, you know, uh, you know, on the team on Team Black, you know, we'll get more potential dragon riders and 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 soldiers with, you know, with you know, Renice making peace with with uh Alan, um, you know, Corlos's bastard, you know, and, and and so, you know, so there's stories things in that storyline that's you know going to continue so uh, yeah i think there's there's a lot to, to mind there in addition to just the you know obviously the, the conflict uh but uh, to me I, I felt like this was if, if team green won it was a pirate victory i mean I, I, I to me it just i think things are kind of at a stalemate at this point yeah yeah things are d- definitely at a halt um on yeah. the battlefield yeah. Um, as Team Black Green's king, I don't know. We we will find out next week what happens to Aegon. Um, let's move on to the boys, season four, episode six, Dirty Business. Um, will, do you want to start us off on this episode? 
Uh, sure. So the boys episode six. Hard. Gosh, where are we? The season's almost over. <laughs> what, two episodes left. Uh, yeah. This episode, I I have to say, it seemed that things were kind of just sort of treading. I feel like we got some advancement in a lot of stuff this week with with this episode. Of course, we we get another Gen V tie-in with um with Tech Knight. And his party at the, with the Federalist Society, and yeah, we just you know, and, and and you know, we 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 learn a little bit more about what Homelander. Well, we see we basically see the empty suit, the empty the empty, the empty cape that Homelander is without uh, without having uh, Sister Sage there as his uh, as his as his brains for the you know for the operation. But uh, but yeah, you know, we, we you know we start us this you know we get multiple things going on with this episode. Of course, we, we you know we, we see we get some clarity on on what we thought with Butcher and 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 oh, we um, confirmation. yeah let's, yeah and Joe yeah. <laughs> we got confirmation <laughs> yeah we got confirmation this week with that so yeah so the whole angels um well, i'll just start with i'll just start with butcher story here um yeah so we you know we did we, we did see the dueling angels as far as butcher and, and joe and and uh, becca and uh and, and samir and you know the scene of the you know what i really liked about that scene whenever uh but whenever that the dispute when was going on in Butcher's head and, and seeing Samir's reaction to, you know, seeing Butcher, you know, arguing with himself. Um, it, you know, it, it was, it was, it was cool just to get some confirmation of a theory that many people had, <laughs> including us, uh, but also uh, it really gets to the core of something I think we were talking about maybe in a, in a prior episode, as far as what is Butcher's true nature at this point, you know, will he, will, Will, will the Becca side of his personality went out, or will the Joe side of his personality went out, um, and and you know, forcing Samir to, to to finish this virus within the within the week to to basically you know create a weapon of mass destruction for for suits. Yeah, it, um, I'm so mad at this whole scene. <laughs> it didn't work for me. I think it's stupid because. Like you were right last week, Kessler is just somebody from apparently uh, Butcher's past in the military, and um, it's just uh, yeah. And this whole thing about what is Butcher's nature, I feel as though I don't know. It's just I feel like that got resolved in an earlier season. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, but then they've decided to go d back down. I don't know. There's just something like, really, we're doing this again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, why? Why? I, I mean, come on. And, and I don't know. It's just, I, I understand like how we got here, but I also just, I'm not a big fan of so far the destination or mm -hmm. where, where we are. It just, I don't know. It doesn't feel like there. there's, and I've had this complaint about the boys aspect of the show for this entire season. Is it, that yeah. me? It's just not working like it used to. Mm -hmm. And the superior storyline always seems to be occurring over with the seven and with Homelander and, and just, the writing really comes out cle clearer and more crisp and and very like really I can't believe we basically watched Tech Tech Night a BDS BDMS scene that nobody asked for between Tech Night Ashley and Huey hmm. and then Huey is ashamed because <laughs> he got off on it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, I don't know if he was. Well, you're talking about when he like broke down with Annie at the end. Yeah, he mentioned he rubbed one out. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, that whole that whole that whole sequence was just problematic for me for various I, reasons. Yeah, I definitely was like, why can't I? I need to fast forward through this because this is a lot, and I don't. I'm not here for this. <laughs> this is yeah, so yeah. weird. So. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just. I mean, I get where they were. 
I mean, I, I, I get what they were aim, trying to aim for there as far as like with with tech and the whole with ashley it and the whole went on way too long yeah 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 and yeah and it just yeah it did go on way too long and and i just felt like you know with with i mean it was like on the one hand like making light of like someone being assaulted in a sense because i mean he once they realized who he was and then they want to take it to the next level it was just like it went from consent to like something completely different I mean, well, I don't think Huey consented to even begin with. No. But, um, and so there was, I, you know, there was that aspect of it too. It was just, it was just so messed up. Yeah, I will you, say with the, the one place where it did redeem itself was whenever they like gave all the tax money away to all the to lefty causes. <laughs> right, right. Huey did, like in a weird way, when he was wearing that mask and dressed as a uh, web weaver. Yeah. It, it was like he took a stupid pill because. Mm-hmm. You're like, dude, you followed him into the basement and you are you are you looking around at what's around you? Like, where do yeah. you think this is going to end up? And then and he didn't really seem that bothered by it, even sticking his bare ass into a cake and then having yeah. a fart. Like, like that raised kind of a red flag. But I don't know. Huey just <laughs> a weird <laughs> way. It's very yeah. disappointing. I mean, but it but it's weird because you have a sequence like that in this episode, which is basically its own little plot line going on. And then you fast forward to um, the last scene with Homelander, and we literally very briefly get shown, and it's the return of Homelander's mommy issues, as I yep. like to call them. Yep. And he's literally sucking on Firecracker's tit because she took pills so she could <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is me. I'm like, oh, oh, we're okay, okay. But it was brief. It was yeah. very brief. There was a lot more talking before we're actually shown it, and then we're there, and then we're gone. Like yeah. it's uh, so it made the point. So I, yeah. So it's just. They're, they they have a way to do this in the show, and they have done it over four seasons, where I'm not completely taken out of the episode, but when you have an entire arc and like plot line and a sequence where I'm like, oh my god, I just I can't sit through this for another five minutes. I just want to fast forward. Because at the same time, you're like, well, they're not going to kill, kill Huey down here, so what's the point? Yeah. Right. And 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 it makes me more mad because the whole point of this Tech Knight story arc actually had more to do with a with a two minute conversation he has with A Train yes. at the beginning than it does with anything that happened in the torture BDSM chamber. <laughs> like yeah. like it's it's you're just sitting here thinking to yourself. I know these are good writers, but it's as if they just get lost in their own, like, sick fan fiction and think that's what the viewer wants to see. Like, you don't need it. We could have spent way more time with Black Noir and The Deep. That's all I'm saying. Like, we could have hung out with the kids that got left at home for a bit more than watch that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the Black... uh noir and deep's conversation because i mean you know because it really you know power what what the deep say violent violence Violence is power power violence is power which is very weird coming from the deep (laughs) yeah yeah but you know but you know but but it makes sense as far as like with that with with deep saying it because he's always been like the you know he's always been the butt of the jokes and (laughs) and and really gets into his psyche as far as him wanting to be the little little mini homelander you know um but uh but you're right i mean the the the, the conversation that a train and tech had um like i said the the payoff with all the other crap that went on with how they treated huey um you know the the when the butler like you know, who who basically was the quote-unquote alfred <laughs> for for tech uh you know takes them out and you know and they send all the money off it, it makes it um 
makes that whole that whole secret that whole story, I guess, B story in this episode um, uh, worth. I won't say worth it, but it, it was a good payoff for that because, uh, you know, and you're right. The writing is like whenever the writing is on point, like like, for example, you know, calling out the, the prison industrial complex. Yeah, with the soups and everything, you know, those are that's where I feel like the show excels. I mean, like, for example, when 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 Newman was getting mansplained to the senator about the yep. uh, about abortion and stuff uh, and her head, her own head pops. That's when the show like bites. And I'm like, yes, I kind of I crack. I was like, <laughs> I just laughed out loud because I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, even before we started recording, I was just talking about how how a lot of things in this show are mirroring, you know, you know, art is mirroring life or vice versa. But that's where, you know, that's where this show pops because it, it's telling us something other than just gratuitous. And I felt the scene with Huey was gratuitous. Yeah. I I don't know if gratuitous, just uncomfortable. I yeah. mean, and I've had a few of those. Like, yeah. there was one scene with uh, the big episode when Homelander goes home that I was like, I, I, I couldn't. That took me out. That went too far for me. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, it was because it was so extended. I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't want to be here for that long. I'm okay with being here because I understand this universe. I've lived in it for four seasons. But you don't have to cram it down my throat because yeah. then it just comes to becoming gratuitous and just not something I want to continue watching. Like it's one thing to make an, a, a viewer uncomfortable and to push that boundary. But the longer a viewer sits in that uncomfortability, the more likely they're like, you know what? I actually don't have to watch this. I can just fast forward through this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and me, yeah. And, and 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 maybe, you know, maybe what we're experiencing is how some people who may have some views that are consist, you know, more in line with Homelander and some of the, you know, the Stan Eggers of the world <laughs> and the Federalist folks who they were having the party at, uh, how they feel when they whenever they watch those scenes because they're like talking about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um I, so I, I, it's funny. I, I knew when, when Sage gets shot, I'm like, oh, well, they don't, they don't remember that. They don't know her brain self regenerates. She'll be fine. I had forgotten though. She gets stupid. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't, but I did not. I was like, oh, I saw it. I was like, oh, I see where this is going. I, yeah, I didn't, and um, and I like that because then we got the scene where Homelander tries to play politics and yep. realizes very quickly, uh, no, and and he just has this um great way of coming off as like frustrated, but mm-hmm. not at himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, when that when that whole sequence was going, I was like, okay, now when 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 is this going to start lasering people? <laughs> right. Because because he had that look, you know, he, you know, whatever. I mean, Anthony Starr, you know, we, I know we ju- we talked about uh, earlier this season where we, we should get the hardware, but I mean, it's it every episode is just like another thing for his FYC reel because like the the facial twicks twicks that he has. Uh, where whether whether it's the scene at the end with Firecracker, or during this or or during this dinner party, I mean it's just it just just reinforces out the, the amazing work that he's doing this season with this character. Yeah, yeah, he he does it every season. Um, this season is no d- different. Yeah, and um. Oh, and then we got more Kamiko going to try to visit Frenchie and failing yeah. to because he doesn't want visitation. Um, but she got nowhere else to go, which I thought yeah. was a line, even though I'm really annoyed by this whole Frenchie and Kamiko are not together situation. But whatever. yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, th- that that the whole Frenchie story this season is just not hitting with me at all. Uh, I could really at this point, I'm just not invested and care less about it. Um, the thing that was interesting to me, though, is the A-Train mother's milk uh, dynamic and um, where 
with you know obviously with a train saving well rushing mother's milk to the hospital well we, you know at first they played it like it was a heart attack but of course we later learned it was actually more of a panic attack but um but just you know i guess they continue to like deepen a train's redemption arc especially whenever you saw the reaction of the young kid there when he you know when he put uh, mother's milk on the stretcher i don't i don't feel like it's a redemption arc i feel as though he had his redemption arc but now we're getting in post-redemption territory Okay. Trying to make him a member of the boys. Mm. Switching may... a traitor, a traitor yeah. to to Homelander. But but at the same time, he's he's just a ticking time bomb on as a member of seven. So he's he's over there. Mm. And he's also okay, he's a MacGuffin for like when the boys are in trouble. Oh, well, A Train just so happens to show up and is able to take them to safety. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't use Annie anymore. They have right. to switch him out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna call a spade a spade. Yeah. Definitely being used as a tool there. They they've done some very very similar things with Ashley too on that side where they've demoted her and now she's also someone in an alliance with A Train and she just randomly is showing up at places because I mean Ashley's a staple to this show. So yeah, she is. Yeah, I mean uh, yeah, she's the other one as far as like who. Uh, should definitely get some consideration because she does. I mean, Colby Benefi does such wonderful work with that character. <laughs> yeah. And really, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, but you know, but um, yeah. Well, and Newman too, you know, we, we finally do, you know, since we're getting closer and closer to the um, end of the, of the season, you know, of course she still doesn't out herself. I don't think it's a super, I only watched episode once. So I can't remember, but I think yep. she, she uh she you know she you know she she steps in and plays the political game and 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 tells the crowd what they want to hear and of course they do get it recorded so you know so again they they get another piece of leverage over newman uh with the, with the whole 25th amendment um you know conspiracy that she has with with sage and homelander so um yeah and and, and who knows you know uh you know so that we'll see how how they exploit that going forward yeah all right well that is it for us tonight will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at will m polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at sj belmont s-j-b-l-m-o-n-t please fo- follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever I get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.